with furniture making, there's there's a lot of variety in the timbers that you can use. Something like Windsor chair making, often different timbers are used for different parts of the chair. There's less sort of restrictions on what timbers you can use. Oak is uh, quite a good hard wearing timber, so it's often used for drawers. It won't wear out with constant use. Cedar for drawer bottoms. Cedar has a has quite a strong smell to it, and this repels insects. It stops moths from eating your clothes, supposedly, and stops woodworms from eating the furniture. Timber is constantly moving with changes in the humidity. Like a sponge, it will always absorb and give off moisture. It tries to find the equilibrium with the environment that it's in. As it gives off moisture, it shrinks, and as it takes on moisture, it expands. The timber expands perpendicular to the grain, as opposed to along the grain's length. With veneer, you can, you can sort of lay pieces onto a groundwork in any direction you like, and the groundwork will hold them where they are. Whereas with solid wood, the, the, yeah, the timber's gonna be moving. You can't just glue bits together. You have to make sure the, the grain is in the right direction. Having learnt traditional furniture making techniques, I like to apply those to the brief that the client gives me. And it's good to have a good idea of what the client wants in terms of style. A lot of the hard work and the quality of a piece of furniture is inside the joints and I like to show those bits off so that you can see how the piece is made and you can see the quality of the joints inside. These are dovetails and this is a mitre on the end of the dovetail. I want each one of these dovetails to go down all at the same time to avoid uh, cracking this side. So if I put the piece of wood there, it'll put pressure on each one at the same time with every blow of that mallet. So these sections are called the tenons and they fit into corresponding mortises. Uh, they'll protrude through the top and then have a wedge to expand them out to give a nice tight fit on the joint. And there's also a housing which runs all the way to stop any gaps from showing. If the tenons were too big for the mortises, um, Hammering them, hammering them home could cause them to break bits of wood off. So yeah, you've got to be quite precise with the size of everything. So I want to make sure everything fits as well as I want it to before I glue it up. I like to use fairly straight grain timber. You find in forests, it's trying to grow straight up to get to the light so it will grow taller um, without throwing out branches so low down so you can get longer pieces of timber out of this as opposed to the edge of forests or in fields where the tree is more free to grow in any direction. Straight grain timber is more predictable to work with. I look for timber that's cut more quarter sawn, not free, with as little sap on as possible. Bugs, woodworms love it and it's generally softer and, and more likely to rot than the heartwood. If the if the components don't fit together well, the glue won't hold. I like to use a uh, traditional animal glue. It's water soluble. It means that you can clean up the joints more easily. It means that the joints can be taken apart and it also means that the repairs are much easier to undertake. With guitar making, animal glue is preferred because the glue itself is very brittle when it's dried, and so it transmits the vibrations of the of the strings through one piece to another more efficiently than a than a more rubbery kind of glue like PVA would do. This is a piece of brown oak which has a fungal infection, I think, that attacks the timber and turns it this brown colour. This timber would have been this colour and I'm going to use this on the drawers for this piece. I'm going to use bog oak as well for, for small bits, uh, some trim, beading. 
the trees yeah. have fallen yeah. into the bog and hundreds thousands of years later a farmer comes along and digs up the timber the tannins in the timber have been affected by the the minerals in the bog quite difficult to get large pieces of it so I'm using some small pieces of it for I'm going to use it for draw pulls and uh, beading on this piece It's great seeing a home for the things that I've made and it's great to find clients that will look after the piece and appreciate the effort that I've put in.